Tattoo Warrior Season 1 begins in May. I've chosen six amazing artists to compete against each other so they can showcase their best work. Roger Perilla here. Uh, I'm a tattooer out of Atlanta, Georgia. What's up, you guys? This is Joseph Cabello from Tulare, California, representing Body Art Gallery. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Thomas Salcido. Hi, my name is Jacob Lopez. Christian Navarro. I'm the artist Moet. No drama, no categories, just amazing tattoos. Winner will be taking home $5,000. Who do you think is gonna take it? I've been competing my whole life, so having the opportunity to compete in this contest as an adult, more than excited to participate. In the last two years, I hit the road, traveled across the country to many conventions, and took home many trophies. Having been tattooing 16 years, I need to find ways to push myself, to go further and, and push past you know, any barriers that I've created for myself. Okay, which is why I'm excited to join this competition, to compete against other dope artists and to really test my skills on a competitive level. I can't wait to see what this journey is gonna be like, where it's gonna take me. And I'm super excited to be part of this competition and showcase my artwork. No categories, just amazing artists going head to head with amazing tattoos. See you soon, Tattoo Warriors. Ah! Okay, here we go. Um, I'm currently working on this fall sleeve and I've been super busy lately so I haven't been able to post um, on YouTube but this right here it's a sleeve that I cannot wait to share with everyone the meaning behind this this project is has so much meaning my client has an amazing story and I feel like he can he's gonna be sharing the whole entire his story uh, with this project. Uh, we call this project the, um, the Warrior of the Garden and it definitely ties to him, his childhood, the way he came to the United States, uh, all the struggles he had and the, how successful he is right now and how his past influenced his future. So I, I, can't, I just can't wait to show you guys this project. It's gonna be insane. Uh, but as of right now, what I'm gonna do is show you guys a specific part of this project that I'm gonna go in depth and do a tutorial on how I'm gonna execute it, the way I'm gonna do it, the needle selection, the voltage and all that. Uh, as many of you know, I specialize in cover-ups and I do a lot of texture pieces, a lot of statues, and everything has to do with true grace. And it's been so long, the last time I've done um, a black and gray uh, project, but for this project I had to do it because everything was done with true grace but the face um, had to be done differently. That way I was able to separate it from the Hanya mask. I, need, I needed the face to have its own personality. So that's why I decided to do the, this project with a drop system. Now I'm gonna demonstrate the way I'm gonna do this part of the cheekbone here, or this part of the, the face, uh, just to kind of go over the way I did this. And, um, the one thing I'm gonna be doing, am I recording? I swear if I wasn't recording, <laughs> I was gonna say no. <laughs> so the way I'm gonna do this, pro this the, the, the face, this part of the face is with my 13 curve mag and I'm running my machine at a six right now. I bumped it up a little bit more just so I can, uh, so it allows me to do a smoother shading and the drop system that I'm doing is on my large ink cap, I did 10 drops and I filled it up with water. It's gonna be, it's super cool because I feel like it's like a, it's like training wheels or what is it? No, not training wheels. <laughs> it's a uh, muscle memory, <laughs> muscle memory. It's like muscle memory. Like I haven't done the drop system technique in probably three to four years. But as soon as I started doing the, the, the face, the portrait, it's like I never stopped doing it. So, since none of you have seen me do the drip system technique, it's the perfect time for me to go over it, or the way I do it. At least this is, so if you're struggling with doing portraits, uh, this might help you. Now I'm gonna start here on the nose area, and very, just on the surface of the skin, I'm barely brushing the skin so I won't irritate it. Feathering the skin, and from, it's exactly how I remember, which is not rushing it, taking your time, and uh, building up those tones. But as you can see, I'm barely brushing the skin. 
because I think one of the things that a lot of people do go through when they're doing uh, the drip system is the, the skin starts getting swollen because of how many layers you're putting on top. So that is why I am running at a six because I feel comfortable with my hand speed to be able to build those tones without uh, making the skin swollen. And I'm gonna be using this tone for the whole thing. I am confident that, I'm, that, that the tone, the way this tone is gonna heal is gonna be perfect. Look at that. You can already see how soft this is, is coming out. I'm gonna go under the eye here and leave like a little tiny highlight between the eyelid and um, the drop shadow under the eye the eye bag I believe and just leave that little highlight because I'm going to do a white highlight on it to make it look glossy and like I said I mean if you're struggling with this this is just one way of doing it there's so many different techniques that you can uh, use to achieve the same the same um, shade a little bit of different but you're struggling you should try this and hopefully it helps you out so uh, as a reminder I did 10 drops on a large ink cap and I filled it up with water now I'm gonna feather in the edge of the cheek here that way it's not it doesn't finish too harsh it has more like a natural look. Uh, the way I put it together is I, uh, we had a consultation and he told me about the concept that he wanted to use, which is Bushido. And it has air vir eight virtues. I can't, I can't say that. Eight, eight virtues, virtues, virtues. And, um, and I got to thinking and I said, I don't know much about the culture so what I did I, I, I booked them uh, three weeks uh, in advance so I can have those three weeks to really study and learn the culture and I ended up learning the folk tales about the Hanya mask, the Oni mask, the, uh, the Bushido code, their religion, what they used to practice. That really helped me a lot, those three weeks really helped me a lot to really practice and learn about the culture before customizing because there is no way I was going to be able to put this project together without having knowledge and without knowing the culture because the last thing I wanted is to put two things that didn't belong together and that didn't make sense and because his story is so it's, it's just so inspirational inspirational that's another word I can say Inspir inspira inspirational inspirational <laughs> damn oh, entrepreneur damn those words I can't say you know what's one sentence that I can't say together? I can't say speed and limit in a sentence. I, I, I have to separate the two words. Speed limit. Really? Speed limit. Like if I say, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta concentrate. <laughs> you gotta go the speed limit. See what I'm saying? I say spit instead of speed. I it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Hate it. <laughs> Uh, but because his story has so much meaning, I could not afford to put things that didn't make sense together. So it took me three weeks and then I verified with him and everything checked out. Um, so that, that made me really, really connected to this project. So that is why I'm taking my time. I'm making sure that I, um, I execute it the way it's supposed to be executed. So nothing looks like one single tone. Um, and I'm almost done with this project. I feel like I'm going to post it in the next uh, two weeks when I'm done editing because this is four days full of work about, what, maybe like, we're probably 50 hours in, about 50 hours in. So I have a lot of footage to edit. And look at that. That is just blending in super nice. Not rushing anything. So just knowing the culture and being familiar with it just definitely helps you out so much to customize. And that's something that I encourage all artists to do 
is before you customize, learn the culture, learn a little bit, you know, you don't have to fully dive in, you know, but at least gain more knowledge and that's going to help you out so much to customize because it's going to allow you to think deeper and customize more uniquely. Um, I see a lot of, uh, and I don't mean, and I don't mean just go on Google and say, what was Buddha known for? Or what was uh, the Hanya mask known for? Go deeper than that. Like, what was the folktale? What's the history? Do they have different, um, different uh, stories behind it? Do they have different traditions? What is it signified? What year? What, you know, all those little things matter to help you out to customize a lot better. Because I've seen a lot of, for example, in the Aztec culture, I see a lot of artists just put together different gods that don't go together. For example, uh, the biggest one that I see is when they put a uh, Aztec culture with uh, the pyramid that has only one temple on the top, but they don't go together because that's a Mayan temple. Uh, it is, it's a Mayan pyramid, it's called Chichen Itza, but a lot of artists believe that that is an Aztec pyramid, but it's not. The actual one is called the Templo Mayor. So that little mistake is, it's one of those things that if you knew, you could have customized it precisely and come up with a better design. Um, now I'm getting closer to the nose here. The highlight of it is getting brighter because the tones are making it glow because they're on the right spots. As you can see, I'm almost like cross hatching just a little bit. I said it right, right? Cross hatching. Damn. I'm getting good. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm using the same tone to really make this happen. I'm just building it. But as you can see, the skin is not getting irritated because I'm treating it uh, very gently. And I'm keeping the same, the same pace, I'm keeping the same speed, I'm keeping the same pressure, the same voltage. The same distance with the needle, the, with the needle depth. So all those little things can definitely help you out with your portraits. And just being patient. There is no way you can rush a portrait. And it's super satisfying, honestly. I gotta say that uh, it's super satisfying to be able to go back to uh, the drop system because I'm always doing texture. So something a little bit different, you know, gets me excited, but. Um, I don't know when I'm going to do it next, just because I, I need that special project that, um, that uh, brings this out of me. <laughs> and this one was it. And it, is, it was the perfect choice, because now I can see where the Hanya mask starts and where the face begins. But those little things can make a big difference on your projects. But I didn't come up with this in a matter of, you know, hours like it, this took me two to three days to really figure it out and see how I was going to approach it but yeah like I said we have over 50 hours on this and we're almost done I think we got another 10 to go <laughs> another 10 to go and then we're done with the full sleeve and I'm gonna post it <laughs> it's gonna finish up the nose here and call it Oh, look at that softness. That is beautiful. That is so crazy. <laughs> there you go. If you have a technique that works out for you, uh, drop it on the comments. Let us know how you would approach this portrait and what would you do differently. And hopefully uh, some of you can benefit from this video, you know what I mean? And, and uh, if you do a portrait using one of the techniques that you learned here or on the comment section, Post it and tag me on Instagram. I'll make sure to check it out.